Today in this part 21, we are going to cover some of the very important questions similar to the questions which lately appeared in the AZ 900 exams. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. With this part 21, we will be covering 400 questions on AZ 900. By now, I am sure that you must have gotten a good grip on Azure concepts that are vital to pass AZ 900 exam. Having said that, I also understand there might be still some questions and concepts on which you have doubt on and I am here to help on. So anything in your mind related to AZ 900 exam or Azure in general, send in your queries to connect us at the rate thetechblackboard.com and I will surely get back. But for now, let's directly jump in and prepare for AZ 900 exam. So let's begin part 21 with a very interesting question. Question number 381. It says that you plan to extend your company's network to Azure. The network contains a VPN appliance that uses the IP address of 131.107.200.1. Now you need to create an Azure resource that identifies the VPN appliance. Which Azure resource should you create? Your options are virtual networks, load balancers, virtual network gateways, DNS zones, then we are given with local network gateway, traffic manager policies, network watcher, application network gateways and the second last one is CDN profiles and lastly we have express route circuits and the correct answer for this question is option E local network gateway. Now friends local network gateway is an object in Azure that represents your on-premises VPN device. Please pay attention, a local network gateway represents an on-premises VPN device. And that's exactly what is given in the question as well, a VPN appliance with an IP address that is given here. And further it says a virtual network gateway is the VPN object at the Azure end of the VPN and the connection is what connects the local network gateway and the virtual network gateway to bring up the VPN. In case you do not know, VPN is virtual private network. Now let's move ahead. It says local network gateway typically refers to your on-premises location. You give the site a name by which Azure can refer to it and then specify IP address similar to the one given in question of the on-premises VPN device to which you will create a connection. And lastly, it says that you can also specify IP address prefixes that will be routed through the VPN gateway to the VPN device. And for all the deep divers who want to learn this concept in detail, this is the Microsoft tutorial. And it tells you how to create a site-to-site -site VPN connection in the Azure portal. You can learn about all the prerequisite. Then you will learn in this tutorial how to create a virtual network, how to create a VPN network and how to create a local network gateway. There are other things also given here. You will also get to know about configure your VPN device, create a VPN connection, verify VPN connections, connect to virtual machines, optional steps, clean up your resources, which is basically once you have done the exercise, you should always clean up your Azure resources so that you are not incurring any unwanted cost. And now let's do some drag and drop kind of question. Question number 382. So basically in this question, you are given with some of the Azure services on the left hand side. And then you are also given with the definitions on the right hand side. And you have to match these services with these definitions. So what are the services given? We are given with Azure Sapphire, IoT Central and IoT Hub. And now let's read the first definition. It says a managed service that provides bi-directional communication between IoT devices and Azure. And the correct Azure service that matches this definition is IoT Hub. Now let's jump on to the second definition. It says a fully managed software as a service solution to connect, monitor and manage IoT devices at scale. And for this one, my friends, the correct service is IoT Central. And then the third definition says a software and hardware solution that provides communication and security features for IoT devices. I'm sorry, it's not for IoT devices, but it's from IoT devices. And the correct service to match this definition is Azure Sapphire. Now let's do one more drag and drop kind of question. Question number 383. Once again, services given on the left hand side and the definitions on the right hand side. The services given are Azure Machine Learning, 
Azure Functions, IoT Hub, and the last one is Azure Pot Services. Now let's read the first definition. It says an Azure service that provides a digital online assistant that provides speech support. And this one most surely is Azure Bot Services. And then we have an Azure service that uses past training to provide predictions that have higher probability. And this one, my friends, is none other than Azure Machine Learning. The third definition is an Azure service that provides serverless computing functionalities. And I'm pretty sure that you guessed it right. It's Azure Functions. And the last definition says an Azure service that provides data from millions of sensors. And of course, this one is IoT Hub. And now comes question number 384. It says Azure Advisor provides recommendation on how to improve security of an Azure Active Directory Azure AD environment. Yes or no? And the correct answer for this question is no. Let's find out why. Because Azure Advisor provides you with a consistent, consolidated view of recommendation for all your Azure resources. It integrates with Azure Security to bring your security recommendation. And now please pay more attention, my friends. The description ahead will help you understand why we have chosen no as an answer of this question. It says that Azure Advisor provides recommendation on a lot of services like Azure Gateway, App Services, Availability Sets, Azure Cache, Azure Data Factory, Azure Database for MySQL, Azure Database for PostgreSQL and a lot more other databases. And then it also provides recommendation for Azure Public IP Addresses, Azure Synapse Analytics, SQL Servers, Storage Account, Traffic Manager Profiles, Virtual Machine and a lot of other things. But please note that Azure Advisor does not provide recommendations on how to improve security of an Azure AD environment. And that's why no is the correct answer. Friends, passing certifications definitely gives you a jump start in your career. But in long run, you must understand the Azure concepts if you really want to professionally work in Microsoft Azure. Now, even though I try to pass on a lot of Azure concepts in these Q&A videos, but there is surely a limitation due to the format of this video. So all of you who really look forward to Microsoft Azure as a career option, please watch this fundamental series to enhance your grip on Microsoft Azure. The link to this fundamental series is shared in the description box and also in the pinned comment. Now let's take few more questions on Azure Advisor. Here comes question number 385. It says Azure Advisor provides recommendations on how to configure the network settings on Azure Virtual Machines. Yes or no? And this one my friends is an incorrect statement. And this is because an Azure Advisor does provide recommendation to Azure Virtual Machine, but it does not give recommendation on how to configure network setting on your Azure Virtual Machines. That's why no is the correct answer. Now quickly jumping to the next question, question number 386, it says Azure Advisor provides recommendations on how to reduce cost of running Azure Virtual Machines. Yes or no? And this definitely is the correct statement. And here comes question number 387. It says, what is the purpose of Azure Advisor? Your options are provide support advice on Azure services. And then we have suggest performance advice on Azure downtimes. And lastly, it says personalized consultant service that provides recommendation for Azure services. And the correct answer, my friends, is option C. And now comes question number 388. It says Azure Advisor provides focus recommendation in many areas, not just the cost. Yes or no? And this one, my friends, is a correct statement. And I told you in the question number 384, all the various areas where you can use Azure Advisor to get recommendations. And now let's move our focus from Azure Advisor. Here comes question number 389. It says Azure Files is an example of SaaS or software as a service. Yes or no? And most surely this is an incorrect statement. And why so? Because Azure Files is a PaaS or platform as a service offering provided by Microsoft Azure that is built on top of Azure Storage. It provides fully managed file shares over protocol called SMB or server message block. So in case my friends, you have a business requirement where you want to map a drive on the systems that resides on premises to Microsoft Azure Storage, then in that case, you have to use Azure Files. 
And now comes question number 390. It says Azure SQL database is an example of pass or platform as a service. Yes or no. And this one, my friends, is the correct statement. That's why yes is the correct answer. And please understand, my friends, in Azure SQL database, you do not need to maintain anything related to SQL platform because Microsoft manages it. And friends, please make a segregation in your mind. Azure SQL database is not same as Azure SQL running on virtual machine. So in case there is a question that asks Azure SQL on virtual machine, in that case, that is infrastructure as a service. And you may also ask that why Azure SQL database is not SaaS or software as a service. And to that, I would say that in case of Azure SQL database, you still have to maintain the database in order for your application to work. That's why Azure SQL database is PaaS, but not SaaS or not IAS or infrastructure as a service. And with that concept, let's move on to the next question. Question number 391. And here you are given with one statement with this underlined text. Now you have to review this underlined text. And if this makes the statement correct, in that case, you have to choose the no change needed, which is the very first option given here. If the statement is incorrect, then you have to choose the answer choices that makes the statement correct. So basically you have to choose from other three options given here. So what are the three options? Let's check them out. It says within a single Azure region, the third option is within multiple Azure regions and the last one is within a single Azure data center. And the correct answer for this question is within a single Azure region. So the correct statement will become an availability zone in Azure has physically separate location within a single Azure region. And with that, let's jump on to the question number 392. It says the Microsoft Intune product is software as a service platform as a service and the last one is infrastructure as a service. The correct answer to this question is software as a service. Let's quickly jump to the question 393. It says that you can use Azure cost management to view costs associated to management groups. Yes or no. And this one, my friends, is a correct statement. And here comes question number 394. It says that you can use Azure cost management to view the costs associated to resource groups. And now comes next question, question number 394, a similar question. It says that you can use Azure cost management to view costs associated to resource groups. Yes or no? Now, if you remember the previous question, in that we were given with management group. But in this question, we are asked for resource groups. And this time, my friends, this is a correct statement. That's why we have chosen yes for this question. Now, question number 395 says that you can use Azure cost management to view the usage of virtual machine during the last three months. Yes or no. And this one, my friends, is a correct statement. Quickly jumping to the next question. Question number 396 says that what is required to use Azure cost management? Your options are Microsoft customer agreement, software assurance. The third option is an enterprise agreement. Lastly, we have an Azure plan. And the correct answer for this question is option A, Microsoft customer agreement and option D, an Azure plan. Now let's validate our answer on this Microsoft documentation that says get started with cost management for partners. Here you can read in the very first paragraph, it says cost management is natively available for direct partners who have onboarded their customers to Microsoft customer agreement and purchased an Azure plan. So you can see there are two components here, Microsoft customer agreement and the second one is Azure plan. And those are the exact option that we have also chosen as the answer to this question. And here comes question number 397. It says North America is represented by a single Azure region. Yes or no. And this one, my friends, is an incorrect statement because North America has several Azure regions, including West US, Central US, South Central US, East US and Canada East. So this clearly tells you that North America has multiple Azure regions listed here. Moving on, question number 398 says that data transfers between Azure services located in different Azure regions are always free. Yes or no? And this one is an incorrect statement. Why? Because outbound data transfers is charged at a normal rate and inbound data transfer is free. And this one in the question is outbound data transfer. 
Coming up next is question number 399. It says every Azure region has multiple data centers. Yes or no? And this one, my friends, is a true statement because a region is a set of data centers deployed within the latency defined parameter and connected through a dedicated regional low latency network. And here comes question number 400. Kudos to all of you who are zealfully learning with us. Let's read the question. Question says that which of the following service should you use to organize resources in an Azure subscription? Your options are Azure regions, resource groups, management groups, and the last one is administrative units. And the correct answer for this question is option B, resource groups. And this is because Azure resources are combined into resource groups, which act as a logical container into which Azure resources such as web apps, database and storage accounts are deployed and managed. A detailed information on what is Azure Resource Group is given on this documentation. It says a resource group is a container that holds related resources for an Azure solution. The resource group can include all the resources for the solution or only those resources that you want to manage as a group. You decide how you want to allocate resources to resource group based on what makes most sense for your organization. Generally add resources that share same life cycle to the same resource group so that it's easy to deploy, update and delete them as a group. And of course, all the steps to create resource group are also listed in this documentation. Links as usual to all the documentation that are referred in this video are given in the description box. And that was all for today, my friends. If you gained some value from this video, please like our video. It really helped us grow. And if you joined the Tech Blackboard family for the first time today, then please do subscribe to the channel and also select that all option so that you get the timely notifications of all our upcoming videos. Share our videos on your social media platforms. Our social media platforms are also appearing on your screen. And I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.